video today. The goal is to go down to Southern California and pick up two army trucks we just bought and transport them home. I'm in the cab over right now. I'm going to go pick up a trailer, and it's K2's trailer. So if you guys have been watching the channel recently, you know that K2 Express has continued to pour into my trucking dreams. And I reached out to K2 to ask if I could rent their trailer. And they were like, dude, just use it. You don't need to pay us anything. So thank you very much, K2 Express. Once I get back with the trailer, I have some more work I need to do to this truck to make it ready for its maiden voyage. Now in this video, I alluded to a secret project I've been dreaming about for years. It's been like six years now. And that's why we're going to go pick up these two army trucks because they're going to provide a ton of great parts that I need for this build. And I'll go ahead and drop a few more hints on this secret build in the end of this video. But for now, let's go get this trailer and come back and do a little bit more work to the truck and finish getting ready for this trip in general. You guys, guess where I'm at? The Wizard's Compound. I like the little road blockage he has here. Let's get that out of the way. Now the reason I'm here is because Alan has a military tow bar he's going to let me borrow to help get the army trucks home. So thank you very much, Alan. Let's grab this top one. Seems nice and complete. All righty, folks, I'm going to work on putting a pencil hitch on the back of this low boy. I'm doing this because I want to increase stress in my life and try to flat tow the second army truck behind this trailer. So once we have the pencil hitch mounted there, we'll use a tow bar that I got from Alan to connect from the hitch to the bumper of the army truck. And hopefully that's going to drag the front end around and make it steer along with the trailer. So there are these holes in the pencil hitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill holes into this trailer. And then I have some grade eight, three quarter inch bolts that'll fasten it. And I'm not gonna worry about trying to connect it on this face because these four big bolts should be strong enough. And that'll be the easiest design to get this mounted. This trailer does already have some holes back here. So I don't think K2 will mind if I add four more. So I'm gonna work on that now. Also newsflash folks, breaking news. I actually swapped it to some pants and boots just the sandals in preparation to throw some hot metal burrs all over the place. Didn't want those to get in my toes. So let's start drilling. Okay, that's bolted on. Let's just plop in there. The only issue I'm having with this engine is these two main oil lines that feed over to the remote oil filter. After handling them so much and flexing them around when we were building this engine, now they're starting to leak. So they're dripping quite a bit of oil all over the place. Got these two new lines made. They are nice. Should work great. So let's slap them on. Okay, new hoses are ran. We're ready for the road. All right, folks, something bad just happened. The sun is setting on today. I'm supposed to leave tomorrow morning on this trip. And as you can see by the puddle of hydraulic fluid on the ground and all over my truck, we just blew a hydraulic line in this neck. So bad news is this neck is not gonna function right now as far as disconnecting and loading the truck on. And there's no loading dock or anything at the army auction. So there's no way to get the truck on to the trailer from behind. So we definitely need to get this fixed. Other bad news is I can see the line down in here and that's the one that blew. But these whole sides are just welded solid, part of the frame. So I think the only way to get in there is if you open up this gap again. So I'm gonna go grab the forklift, try to lift this front of the trailer up so that a gap opens up in the neck and we can access down into that line and see if we can undo it in there. And then as soon as the hydraulic shop opens up in the morning, I'll run in and get a new hose made. But hey, let's find some good news in this situation. I always try to do that. First bit of good news, these stoppers were pulled in. So once that hydraulic line blew, it just dropped down on those stoppers. So the trailer is still fully mobile. We can move it around as it is, if need be. Other good news is that hydraulic line blew before the hydraulic bypass valve even opened up to bypass the fluid. Meaning that it didn't take much pressure to blow that line, meaning that it was a bad line, just an old rotted line. Which means that there would be a very good chance that when we go to California, get my truck loaded up, hook the neck back up, and try to lift the trailer back up on the ground, 
the line would have blown then. So I'm glad it blew now, because I can run and get a new one made in the morning. And if it would have blown in California, I would have been hosed. Okay, the front of the trailer's on jack stands. I pulled the truck out of the way. Now let's see if this will open up a gap right there when I lower this. All right, it did not really open up right there. You can tell the weight's off of it because we got a little bit of a gap there, but let's see if maybe opening this valve drops it. Darn, working that valve and doesn't change it. And how do we get down in there? Can at least open that up a little bit. Now you can see a ram in there so yeah maybe i'll just need to completely take off these stoppers and to get in there let's try that pull that cotter pin there okay i got that stopper off to the side now you can see the big hydraulic ram in here and this might be as good of access as we're going to get i just have to reach my hand in there and get back at those lines that you kind of see down in there all right status update it's the line that's on the bottom that blew, and it's way down at the bottom. Okay, I started the line rotating down in there, and now I have it undone in here, which I'm now able to spin and undo the rest of the way. And then let's try to get this out of here. There. So there's our old line. It blew somewhere in here. As you can see, it's just an old rotted line pretty much but yeah oh yeah gaping wide hole right there all right new hydraulic line is made let me take off this tape so we'll get started through these these holes in the trailer all right now that's partially in there oh i should be able to squeeze my long skinny little arms down into this cavity and reach down and get to it so here we go wish me luck my arm just barely fits in here and i have to have my elbow rotated the right way for it to get in there i think i'm really gonna need a second hand here all right let's bail all righty i just can't quite get down in there so i'm gonna try to get this jack in here and spread these plates apart so i can get my arm deeper down in there oh hallelujah we're started doing something that yeah different huh? yeah go ahead and just tighten it all the way you can by hand Whew, I cannot believe we actually got it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's about the limit of the hose out here. Okay. Yeah, it works. Wow. There's also <laughs> a, a pool of oily Crumb dirt down in there. Down in there. Uh, nice. Maybe I'll have you keep on twisting on it a little bit. Yeah. While I wrench on it. Assist you. Yeah. One, two, three. Uh, All right. Uh, it's probably good enough. Uh, oh, oh. I can't believe it works. <laughs> Thank wow. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that bad. That's horrible. It is miserable. Oh, it was way down there too. Yeah. Yeah, like nobody else's uh -huh. arm could have done that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it takes a certain level of length and skinniness to uh -huh. accomplish that. Oh, man. Wow, that sucked. But thank you so much for your help. Oh, yeah. Could not have done it without you. We're back in business. We're arriving to Slunter. There he is. Good morning. Oh, hello. Well, the plan, right now I'm in Nevada, right outside of Vegas. The plan was for these two hooligans to drive and meet me here, and we were all going to sleep comfortably together in the cab over. But I guess they got a little too tired and crashed in a Walmart parking lot two hours away. Yeah, we uh, decided to choose life over death, and decided the smart thing to do would be to camp out in the parking lot for a bit. But a few hours later, we've made it with Hunter. Yeah. Ready to hit the you road. guys didn't get much sleep in no. the Walmart parking lot, but 
Couple, you guys seem good to go. Couple hours in the front seat of a car. Can't complain. All right. Oh, I gotta love that. She heard I gotta right love up. that. is very loose so you're kind of just guessing what gear you're throwing it into and sometimes it likes to spit you out of gears and stuff so as long as the transmission cooperates with us this trip i'm not worried about the rest of the truck so out there we got las vegas hunter what the heck are we doing down here in Vegas? Well, we've got an exciting trip ahead of us. It's the cab over's first main haul. Uh, and we're going heavy right off the bat. Two Go. army trucks. They're the MTVR 7 tons, which they weigh like 35,000 pounds a piece. So the plan is, hopefully, we'll have one on the trailer. And I have a pencil hitch mounted on the back of the trailer and a military tow bar. And we'll roll the second truck behind the trailer and we'll see how DOT likes that. <laughs> Let's top off on fuel before we get to California. It's not gonna be a cheap trip, that's for sure. Don't break the bank, we need some fuel sponsorships up in here. That would help. <laughs> you know I was born and raised in Florida and as a Florida man I love to fish but four years ago I moved to Utah but I still like to fish so I figured I'd take a break from driving up here pull off the side of the road and cast a line wait Utah's all just desert Where's all the water? Alrighty, righty, all is not lost because I do have Fishing Clash on my phone. Fishing Clash is the sponsor of today's video and allows me to get a taste of catching all my favorite fish from back in Florida while in the comfort of the back of my semi-truck in the middle of the desert. It's perfect because the game starts out fishing on the Florida coast, which is obviously nice and familiar to me. And from there, you can level up and fish in all different areas around the world. All right, I'm going to cast my line out and see what bites. I've hooked something, so now I'm going to moderate how fast I'm winding in to keep the line not too tight and not too loose. And boom, I got a snook. I love snook, they're super fun to catch. Fishing Clash also has some amazing graphics. Let's just appreciate the detail of this lionfish I just caught. And they also have a player versus player dueling option that takes the game to a whole nother level by getting some competition involved. I just want to make sure to upgrade my rod and lures to give me a better chance of winning when competing, especially when playing against friends or competing in tournaments. Also, don't miss out on the upcoming opportunity to catch some creepy creatures only during the week of Halloween. You can support this channel by downloading Fishing Clash to clicking on my link that's down in the description below, or you can just scan this QR code right here. Then make sure to use my special gift code of Hunter Goodrich to get a $20 value reward of upgrades for free. You just click on this blue tab up here in the corner, click gift codes, and type in Hunter Goodrich to get a unique avatar, mythical lure card, 50 luck power-ups, and 30 weight power-ups to help catch the bigger fish. So while you go start playing Fishing Clash, I'm going to get back to driving. My cooler tipped over, but the beefy rice is okay. Oh no. Beefy rice? but the old Ford cab over did the job. Yeah.
roadside fix. Yeah. Good thing we're prepared. She's rolling and free to go now. Sweet. What are you working on? Swapping batteries. This is the one that runs and drives, but it needs to jump started to start, but we also have new batteries here. So we're just gonna swap these in so we can reliably shut her down and start her back up. Who's gonna carry the boats? Uh, and the, the logs! Sounds gnarly. Yeah, these are the meanest Jake brakes off a of little C12. They sound so mean and they're so strong. Too. Oh, yeah. I love Legal than 
double towing that truck behind the trailer. So we'll at least drive that truck out of California and then maybe we'll hook it to a trailer after that. Does it look like a hookup double still to just tap over and see how it handles it? Other than that, let's get to it.
Okay, I'm trying to hide from the wind here. Basically, it worked great having the dead truck on the trailer behind the semi and then just driving this other army truck behind, which Aaron put a ton of seat time in this thing. I can only imagine how old that must have gotten with it being so windy and cold and noisy. And AJ also put several hours in the seat of this thing, so props to those guys. They did a great handling it. And they drove it all the way from California into Utah. But we're going to finish off the rest of the trip by finally doing doubles. One, because I want to try it. Two, because it'll finally give a relief to my buddies so they don't have to be driving this thing without a windshield anymore. So we got the tow bar back to the bumper, about to hook it to the trailer. And their plan is to just leave this truck idling and that'll keep air pressure pressurized to release the parking brakes. And with the motor running, it'll also send fluid where it needs to go in the automatic transmission so that everything stays fine there. So let's get hooked up and finish off this trip. Okay, we made it home with the whole rig. Sorry we're only able to bring you guys boring videos since we're so good at what we do and we're so lucky. We never have blown tires, engine problems, breakdowns, run-ins with DOT. We just had an absolutely perfect trip getting from California all the way back to Northern Utah. Zero issues. I'm also super stoked to have these trucks home now because now I can get started on the dream project, the secret project. Hopefully I'll have this revealed to you guys soon but I have to keep it a secret for now. Which is, as a reminder, both of these trucks are gonna end up being combined into one ultimate rig, and we're gonna be using the frames from both trucks, a bunch of the axles, as well as both engines are gonna be powering this secret build. It'll have two axles in the front that'll both steer, as well as two axles in the back, or maybe three. It might be eight wheel drive or 10 wheel drive, I haven't decided yet. And that's all I'm gonna say about it for now, because we're probably gonna get immediately to tearing this one down. This truck does not run currently. Should just be some minor electrical thing with the engine. But now that these trucks are here, I'll have all my measurements to start designing on SolarWorks on the computer. And I'll be able to make a lot of progress with the build and the design of everything with just tearing down this truck. So we're gonna leave this running truck put together for now. So let's unload everything and have some fun with this running truck. 